Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. Today I want to show you the uh, dashing spaghetti build. Okay, we're talking about flame dash totems. And yeah, so why flame dash totems? Because it has been highly requ uh, request, re requested by the community that I finally take my hands or get my hands on this, uh, yeah, meme build. And people call it meme build because yeah, it's, it's actually fun to see totems dashing around, right? Uh, but I gotta say, it's not a meme build anymore, cause I killed all content with it, so Uber Elder down, deathless, after a couple of sets. Uh, but still, I think for a meme build, it performs way too well. So let's take a look at the Uber Elder encounter, and also then we talk about the gearing process itself. And since it was the Elder challenge, like getting this uh, build up to kill Uber Elder, I decided to take only Elder items, and also an Elder-based outfit. So yeah, let's take a look. I don't know how much I said call. There we go. Easy, dude. Flame dash, totems, spaghetti, level 83. Easy clap, deathless. Ah, good build. And we gotta watch his eye on top of that. Perfect. Ah, there you go. Hey, that's supposed to be a challenge, like 24 hour challenge, you know, like when we were in like 13 hours and we had a lot of break times as well. Like, give me some challenge here. Okay. What is it? We're gonna make a fun gamble or are we actually checking it or are we just gonna We actually check it first? Malevolence damage over time. Oh that's that's actually good. Salo tree crit strike chance. Oh wow, this is actually good. 
Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the footage of the Uber Elder fight. And yeah, we, we kind of did it in the first, I think, 12 hours or so. So there was still like dozens of time uh, to go since it was actually an attempt to do 24 hour stream since it was my 30th birthday uh, yesterday. So uh, yeah, the problem for that, or at least there has been two major reasons why I could not do the 24 hour challenge. First of all, I'm old. Okay, I'm, I'm 30 now. I mean, I personally think that I'm still 18 with just 12 years experience, but still your body is actually getting worse now, okay? So um, think about it. You, you are motivated, you play in a cool build here, right? Headache. Like, oh god, okay, then headache, yeah, good. Then just take some painkillers, you just keep on going. Ooh, my back hurts. Shit, what is that? Oh, god damn, you know? These kind of stuff. And the second thing that is actually the major thing why I didn't go for 24 hours is that this build just performed way better than I expected. And after, what do we have now, playtime? I think it's like uh, 16 hours now. Um, probably like 16 hours it was. Now I have some fail records with this build guide here. But yeah, content creator things, okay? But still, 16 hours, we did a lot of PvP as well. And I gotta say, Flame Dash is actually pretty viable as a PvP spec because you're just sitting there, you spawn your Flame Dash totems and they're just gonna hunt down the enemy, right? And they're gonna burn down. So... First thing, and I know that this is going to be asked quite often, or you guys think about it right now. MB, when you're saying you're playing Flame Dash Totems, why do you use Searing Bond uh, as a DPS addition in that case, right? And no, that's actually not really true, because we are using like a typical Totem build uses the Soul Mantle at Serious Reflection Self Flagellation combination. So the thing about that is, if you uh, have totems and they die, you're gonna uh, inflict yourself with a curse. So we're just gonna wait until those die or just spam those here. We have four totems, so now uh, two totems died. I got two debuffs. Um, so I'm cursing myself with a level 20 curse once a totem dies. So to counter this one, we are using the Atiris Reflection because it says unaffected by curses. That means I'm having those curses, but they're not doing anything against me. And then we use the self-flagellation jewel, which says 20% increased damage per curse on you. So as far as I know, we can have up to 13 curses, uh, which makes 260% increased damage that I have in total for my totems here, right? So the problem is Flame Dash itself. So Flame Dash is a movement skill and it has a three, sa uh, three stacks here and then it's, it is on cooldown as soon as you use a Flame Dash stack here, right? That means I can legit like Flame Dash three times in a row and then it starts to be on cooldown. And I mean, in this case, it was four times because when I used the first Flame Dash, it was, the cooldown was already recovering. So I'm using my second and third Flame Dash and then the cooldown of the first stack is actually back up. So I can actually Flame Dash here four times and then it starts getting clunky because I'm relying to the Flame Dash cooldown. And this is the same thing when we are socketing this into the Soul Mantle, which gives me the Spell Totem. So now I'm having Flame Dash Totems. I can get three instantly up, and then I'm just bound on the cooldown of Flame Dash. I'm using the 30% increased Flame Dash cooldown recovery speed on my helmet, but it's still way too slow. So as you see, I'm having currently four curses here, five curses, six curses. It ramps up pretty slowly. So to counter that, I knew that I had to take a second totem that I can really spam here. And you see how fast I'm getting my curses done here. And if you're wondering why I sometimes get a curse and sometimes not, uh, if I have, for example, the Enfeeble on me, and it reapplies the Enfeeble. I'm not getting an additional totem, but it resets the cooldown on the Enfeeble, as you just saw here. So that's why it sometimes just takes a little bit longer that you're getting your 13 curses, I think. So, that means on the bosses, I can now, like, spam those to gather my curses, and I'm not affected by them, but I'm getting the damage, and then once I stack those up, I can use my Flame Dash totems, and they're going to dash around, dragging the Searing Bond, or how I call it, the Spaghetti, with them. So the actual damage overview here, or at least the damage totem setup, would be three times the um, Flame Dash and then two times the Searing Bond, and this is how I play those, uh, or this build. So, the next thing we're going to talk about is Flame Dash itself once more, because you're having two damages over here. You have the initial damage here, the, the 500 to 800 fire damage, and then you're leaving this burning ground, uh, if we put this over here, this burning ground here that deals a damage over time. So the first idea was to just focus on the Flame Dash initial hit uh, to get this as high as possible. But once I noticed that I only can have like up to three totems fast, 
uh, means that I need another idea. And this is why I decided to not focus on the fire damage, not going crit, but rather than just um, focusing on the damage over time effect that this flame dash is delivering. And when talking about damage over time, there is a second totem that suddenly deals damage over time. It's Searing Bond, which has no initial hit, but it has fire damage over time, same as the burning ground of the uh, flame dash here. That means that I can stack two totems with the same amount of effort, just going the alley overload and then just stack up the uh, generic elemental damage because the hit damage, the crit multiplier and stuff only applies once the totem is actually hitting. So the critical strike chance doesn't bring me anything in terms of the burning ground and also for the searing bond totem. So if we take a look on the playstyle, how does this look like? Um, let's run a Xoft's Breach. This is sadly only the normal Xoft's Breach, but still, this is. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's quick DD. I'm, I'm recording a video here. So you see how this build is performing when there is a lot of mob density. And don't forget about I'm running 100% chance to ignite. That uh, means the, um, my flame dash itself, the totem, the initial hit, once it flame dashes towards an enemy, has 100% chance to uh, ignite here, 103%, and then I'm running the ignite proliferation, so the ignite will spread. And since we're running pure elder, I decided to take the blasphemous grasp, which also tells me 4% damage over time multiplier for ailments per elder item, so I'm stacking up the ignite damage on top of that. So let's take a look how this looks like. I'm just like randomly spamming my searing bond or the spaghetti totems to get my curses. I'm getting down three flame dash and two of these. And yeah, then we're just gonna wait until these totems just dash around and uh, yeah, have fun and then leave uh, down the burning ground here and mobs will just uh, die within that, okay? And it's actually in breach since I leveled up in the breaches a little bit. Um, it was actually fantastic playstyle, right? Oh, you have to level up gems here. The gem levels are still like level 18 or something. So pretty straightforward. Get two flame dash totems and the searing bond totem like one time, two time, uh, two button presses and you have up your setup. And they're just going to flame dash over everything and uh, yeah. Uh, the ignite proliferation helps with the clearing and then you just keep on going like that. And as you see, they are just having fun, those flame dash totems to just... Uh, kill and flame dash towards the next enemy and the next enemy and just dragging these spaghettis with them for the actual burst damage okay i mean i mean this is a meme build right so it should not be good at all since meme build this is what meme builds are for uh but as i said if i kill the meme pretty much because these uh, totems are performing way better than i expected and if you have a meme build and killing uber elder um yeah kill the meme i guess but still, there's one thing that I want to mention here. And this is what I say to all the viewers when they are talking about weird builds or uh, their builds are not performing too well. It's always a matter of currency, right? So if your build sucks, just get more exalts and use them, okay? So at one point, you are so overgeared that even the worst skills like flame dash totems are suddenly actually respectable single target damage and uh, yeah, profit or at least like an enjoyable way uh, to play this game, right? I gotta say, the Flame Dash Totems itself is kinda rough, okay? So in, in close terrain, like here, you see? This is the perfect example, they are not dashing. And why? Because they are like blocked through the terrain or something. So you wanna have like an open, a more open area, so these, because sometimes the, the Totems are just not dashing, right? But yeah, here we are, almost at Xoft, so now it'll give me an amulet like yesterday. Uh, I did like one, the first Xoft give me an amulet plus the, the blessing, so easy a uh, couple exalts profit. But as I said, first spamming those to get the debuffs, then triple flame dash and one searing bond cursing the enemy with the Stormbrand. And yeah, that's it. It dropped the Scroll of Wisdom, which is good. I mean, obviously, it's, it's, a, it's a level 70 area, and this also works on the tier 16, so I would say we're just gonna run a tier 16 now, uh, so you see how that performs. I would say uh, we run a Phoenix map here, I guess, so just a lot of damage, players are cursed. Yeah, I guess this should be fine. As I said, it's kind of a meme build. I just, two things, you know, I'm old, right? So my, my um, reaction timings are super bad, so if I die, Blame it on packet loss or on my uh, age here, right? But yeah, pretty much the same playstyle as we just saw. We're getting down the flame dash totems and the uh, spaghetti totems here. 
And yeah, they are just going to dash forward, ignite, ignite proliferation, dragging the spaghetti with them for the initial burst damage. And I think we're just gonna rush forward. And no, this time around I'm not doing blight. And yes, it is capable of doing blight, but I don't want to make this video way longer than I want it to be, right? Because it's actually just a showcase of a meme build. And I'm currently like doing a build guide about it, which is actually kind of weird. But yeah, why not? If, maybe if somebody's interested on how this uh, build works together and stuff, then yeah, this is for you. But the rest, just enjoy, lay back and enjoy dashing uh, totems that are dealing with uh, tier 16 mobs uh, without any big problems. And if you're saying, hey, wait a second, you are like squishy as hell, you have like 3k life and uh, what the fuck is this shit? Yeah, um, there is still three layers of defense here, right? We have life, then we have energy shield, which is a, uh, yeah, like another layer of defense here, right? And I should not click those. Oh, don't, ah, easy to, good build, good build. Um, and we have mind over matter. So we are saving, we are having a way more effective life pool than actually just 3000. Kill, safety portal, always be safe here. Because I'm only level 83 at the moment. So we skip Cassia, no, nobody needs to do that here. Uh, and we're just gonna take a look how this will perform against Phoenix. And I kind of know already that I will just fuck it up somewhere. But maybe it's going to be deathless. I mean, I've done all the Guardians de uh, yesterday deathless as well, so... Let's, let's just see, maybe I'm just bad today. So what we are doing is first leveling up gems, then we're gonna spam those totems to get our debuffs going, right? Then flame dash, this, this, and let's hope that we're actually doing enough damage. Where is my flame dash totems? They just died. Flame dash totems. Cursing enemy. Yeah, good. Flame dash. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, my. Phoenix already half HP. So I just hope that I can dodge this here. Dude, the, the totems are just dying way too fast sometimes. Oh god, oh god. Okay, totems, spaghetti. Dash, please. Good. More dashes. Look at the bird. Okay. As I said, what was this? Let, let me check. Do packet loss. See that? See that spike? That was packet loss. So I, I was actually thought that I'm just having bad reaction times, but actually it was packet loss. So let's try again, hopefully with a more stable <laughs> server here. Okay, flameless totems, spaghetti totems, cursing the enemy. And. And. Ooh. Spaghetti. T. Easy clap. Like, if you are having a stable server here, that would have been deathless here, right? So, just, just saying, just saying. Okay, let's take a look at the rest of the gear. And uh, sadly, I cannot deliver any stream highlights. I would want to, but, you know, I'm always running music and copyrighted sounds, so I cannot really take all the music here because the, the video will get flagged and maybe copyright strike even and so on. So, for the gear, as I said, decided to go only Elder here with the helmet, with the increased flame dash, uh, cooler recovery speed, why use a bone helmet? No, I've not taken any minion notes, I could have done that for the increased damage, but uh, I was just searching for the flame dash recovery speed plus the Elder helmet base, and there was only two, and those were both uh, two Elder bone helmets, so I just took this one here, having here Searing Bond, Burning Damage, Efficiency, and Ali Focus here, because Ali Focus the Searing Bond is never hitting, is not igniting, so I can use the Ally Focus for the increased uh, damage over time here. Then I decided to use uh, a Void Scepter for the generic elemental damage. Uh, just multi-modded the fire damage over time multiplier with some damage over time, fire damage, uh, cast speed, ignite, and so on. Just pretty easy. Then we have here Stonebrand, Curse and Hit, Flammability with the Ally Weakness on my gloves. That's why I'm using the Whispers of Tomb to apply to Curses on this part. Then the Aetherius Reflection, as I said, to be unaffected by the curses for the Soul Mantle. Um, if you're wondering how to get an Elder Soul Mantle as an Elder uh, uh, Aetherius Reflection, you have to chance the base item. So this is a Spider Silk Rope. There is two outcomes. I got it on the first one, gladly. And there is only one outcome for the Golden Buckler here. So you chance that to be an Elder uh, Aetherius Mirror, and then you, you use the Prophecy to get the Reflection out of that, and we'll keep the Elder status here, same as the uh, chanced Spider Silk Rope that turned into a Soul Mantle. Here I'm having Shield Charge, Fortify, faster attacks, like obviously this is my movement skill, besides Flame Dash, because I could use a second Flame Dash, but if I'm running two different Flame Dash, they will still share the cooldown. That means I had Flame Dash early on, but every time I Flame Dash just to have a movement skill, uh, my totems had minus one stack, so I could not spam three totems here because I had those on cooldown. And also I died once because my flame dash totems 
We're on cooldown, so I couldn't use Flame Dash myself, right? So that's why I'm using Shield Charge. Then for the chest, uh, Empower Support, Burning Damage, Ignite Proliferation, Combustion Support, Flame Dash, and Swift Affliction to increase the damage of both Ignite and the Burning Ground, the Burning Trail it leaves from the Flame Dash. Then we're using two Elder Pyre rings, which are kind of good, I would say. So there is two rings that you can get. One is the Elder, um, like if you chance those, uh, the Sapphire rings, obviously. One is the Pyre ring and one is the Dream Fragments. It's a ring that makes you freeze immune. But the good thing, if we take a look at this one, let me... Uh, let... Dream Fragments. Okay, wait here. Dream Fragments. So if you have a failed chance, right? If you have a failed chance and not getting a Pyre ring and getting a Dream Fragments instead, don't worry, they are actually going for seven or eight exalts. Okay, so if you make a failed... A failed chance for the build you're still making profit because the dream fragments in elder is way more worth than the pyring itself still i'm using double power uh, pyring for the insane amount of increased burning damage um, that it delivers then the blasphemous grasp since i decided to only use elder items uh, so we're stacking the damage over time multiplier here i have stone golem fire golem meat shield and minion life so uh, the reason for flame golem it's not active at the moment okay i was using an intuitive leap in this jewel slot I got the Golem Commander, which gives me two Golems now. Uh, I was using the Instability, the Mystic Bulwark, and Prodigal Perfection. But in the end, I decided to ditch that cluster because we're a non-crit build. Means that the Power Charges doesn't give anything to me. The Spell Damage only will affect the Searing Bond, but I'm focusing on the Flame Dash. So in the end, I just saved up those points and just said, like, whatever. But this is why I had the Flame Golem, because I was playing with Flame and the Stone Golem coming from the Golem Commander. At the moment, I'm just using the Stone Golem here. Oops, that was the wrong button. No, no, bad showcase, showcase. Okay, now we have the Stone Golem for more live regen. Okay, then uh, this is a Chaos Spam. The problem is here, that's actually the funny part here. If we if we remove both um, the um, the rare items that I just spammed, those three, I'm already like almost rest kept here, right? So I had these boots Chaos Spam. They not even have resistance here, right? Just, be, uh, just only the 12% uh, because I had so much resistance uh, overall, right? So, cause, I mean, we're gonna do this differently. This now is unactive because of the strength gem. So we're gonna get this one in and you're gonna see that I'm already rest kept, still having the belt and the boots. So they are just chaos spammed for life. They have like freaking nine lightning resistance. And they, these boots don't, don't even have uh, movement speed. They don't even have uh, resistance. So it was just like, in the end, before Uber Alda was just like chaos spamming. Hey, can I just get life? I don't need anything else. That's why these boots have just 99 life and nothing else. These have like 85 life, a bit of strength and max ES. So that was fair enough for me, okay? I did not need more uh, resistance because the Aetherius Reflection also gives you 30% all resistance on top of that, uh, the curse immunity and stuff. Uh, here I use Cast Damage Take, Immortal Call with increased duration and Melovalance. I plan to use a Righteous Fire, but that boosts your spell damage and spell damage only affects the Searing Bond, not the Flame Dash itself. So I was like, yeah, you know, we're still focusing on the Flame Dash rather than the Spaghettis here. All right, Flask setup, uh, Poison Immunity Flask, then we have a Sinner Swallow Urn for the faster mapping and the recovery of the Life, Mana, and Energy Shield, which you can play um, non-region maps, basically, because this is not affected by no region here. Then we have a Bleed Immunity Flask, a Mana Flask, just for the Mind Over Matter part. So if I get a big hit and I'm dropping Mana, I still can recover that. And a Quick Seal of Flask to move even faster here. So then for the Skill Tree, we are using the Ancestral Bond for an additional uh, Totem here. Uh, but that means also that I cannot do damage, so it's not a problem. I just run a Stonebrand to curse the enemies. Uh, then the self-flagellation, as explained before, with the combination of the Aetherius uh, Reflection and the Soul Mantle. Um, then I'm using um, a Watcher's Eye with damage over time by Mellow Valance. It's the same one that I used on my Poison character. Uh, other than that, I have here the Intuitive Leap to get a Melding and also the Dreamer for the increased maximum mana here. Damage over time nodes, life nodes. I don't think there is anything special here. Uh, Elemental Overload and Mind Over Matter as our primarily keystones here with the Ancestral Bond here and Wicked Ward. Because still, Wicked Ward is nice to have for the... Since you're not like actively playing, you're basically putting your totems and then you just focus on dodging. So your energy shield regen will, uh, will kick in pretty fast and once you get hit, you're still gonna regen up. So this is quite nice to have on top of that. Let's take a look at the bandit choice. This is still something I should have done before. 
Um, so if we take a look at the passives, I'm having Sierra from Deal with the Bandits because initially I wanted to do a Flame Dash on Hit Totem. So I took a Lyra for the all resistance and also for the crit multiplier. But in the end, this turned out to be a non crit build. So actually, if you want to play this build yourself, you're just going to take the two skill points because the multiplier will not bring anything to you. Uh, for the Pantheons, I'm using non-upgraded Solo Solaris and Yugol, so this would actually be my typical boss setup. But I didn't even bother upgrading my Yugol for the reduced cold damage taking. I was like, dude, this build is so strong, we're just gonna kill Uber Elder without the Pantheons, cause, you know, it's a strong build. For the cosmetics, as I said, a full Elder uh, set over here, Sin Innocence Shield, then we have the Dark Prison Weapon, Celestial Weapon Effect, Character and Footprints. Then we have the new Celestial Steam Powered Portal Effect that you see over here. Uh, and then we have Corsair Flame Dash that makes the Flame Dash be green. Then Automate on Stormbrand. Then we are having the Demonic um, Shield Charge to make it red. Then the Green Searing Bond, which is probably one of the worst MTX ever because they are so pixely. Like I I'm actually, I'm actually dropping frames here. You see, as soon as I zoom in, I'm dropping frames. I'm dropping from 60 to 30 FPS because it's just such a good MTX here. Then uh, the Clockwork Golem for the Stone Golem, then we have Dark Immortal Call and the Monolith Aura Effect to ramp it all up. So yeah, I think Path of Building Link, if you're still interested, is in the description below. But I'm gonna say uh, a big, big, big thank you again for all these uh, people on Twitch that were a part uh, of me celebrating into my birthday and also stayed strong with me with this build because the build was so bad to level up. Oh my god, like, okay, we're starting as a Templar, so the Ancestral Bond is not far away, but I used the Flame Dash Totems from level 11, 10, I think, right? I think Flame Dash is from level 10 and the Spell Totem level 8 or so. So from level 10, we leveled up just with the flame dash totem uh one single totem here right it was so bad it had no damage and especially when you're in like cave maps and you're you put your flame dash totems uh they are not dashing you know because they're limited by the terrain and stuff it was awful and it actually took me like eight hours or nine hours to get into mapping uh and then just ran a, a bunch of breach stones because this is where the build really shined and then i ran like 10 breach stones got up to like level 80 and then I decided, you know what, I'm level 80, let's just try to get this Uber Elder done. So I was just running, running a couple of high tier maps on top of that to spawn Uber Elder and then start with the Guardians. And as I said, it has been a pleasure for me to play this build. In the end, it turned out to be way better than expected, although it was super bad at leveling. But in the end, hey, we did the quest and everything was fine. And now I can finally say this myth is busted because uh, Flameless Totems is not a meme build anymore. It is way too powerful. So guys, thanks for tuning in again. Thanks for watching and see you on the next video.